Congratulations on the purchase of your new tenant scrubber sweeper. Not only will your machine's highly efficient cleaning systems perform well the day you receive it, but for a long time to come. This operator training video will be presented in sections. Safety. How the scrubbing and the wet sweeping systems work together. How the dry sweeping systems work. Controls and instrumentation. Pre-operational checks. Preparing to clean. Cleaning. And draining and cleaning. It is the operator's responsibility to operate the machine safely. The safety labels that appear on the machine indicate important information you need to be aware of when operating the machine. Your machine can effectively scrub and wet sweep or dry sweep dirty floors. The one step scrub button makes it possible to immediately begin scrubbing and wet sweeping with the activation of a single button. As the machine travels forward or backward, the desired amount of water and detergent is automatically regulated and distributed to the floor. The brushes use the detergent and water solution to scrub the floor clean as they throw debris into the hopper. When traveling forward, the squeegee wipes the dirty solution from the floor while the scrub vacuum fan draws the dirty solution collected by the squeegee off of the floor and into the recovery tank. As the machine travels forward or backward, the brushes sweep the debris from the floor into the hopper. A separate sweep vacuum fan draws airborne dust through a highly efficient pleated synthetic dust filter and clean air is exhausted. The machine can be easily operated with the activation of a single button. The key switch is used to start and stop the engine. If your machine is equipped with a diesel engine, you should turn the key switch to the left and hold it to preheat the glow plugs. Most of the scrubbing operations are controlled by the control pod in the center of the steering wheel. The horn button is placed in the center of the steering wheel for easy access. Touching the help icon will display the help screen. Touching the controls help icon will display a screen that explains all of the controls on the display. Touching the back icon will return you to the help screen. Touching the startup video icon will display a short starting to clean video. Touching the select language icon will allow you to set the language displayed on menus. Touching the logout icon will allow you to log into the machine as another operator or a supervisor. Enter your login ID number and touch the enter icon. If you are an operator and your supervisor has enabled the checklist feature, you will need to complete the checklist before you can operate the machine. Complete each of the checks and use the down arrow icon to proceed to the next item on the checklist. After all of the checks are completed, touch the enter icon. The fuel level is displayed to the right of the help icon. Touching the fuel level icon, displays the hour meter, the solution tank level, and the recovery tank level. Touching either the solution tank level or the recovery tank icon will make that icon display on the main operator's screen. To the right of the fuel gauge icon is the optional scrubbing technology icon. It is used to control the scrubbing technology installed on your machine. Fast, ES, or as in this case, ECH2O. Touching that icon will place the install technology in standby mode. When ECH2O is in standby or active, the screen background will be blue. When the scrubbing systems are active, the technology will become active. If a condition or fault exists, the condition icon will flash. Touching the condition icon will display the condition or fault. In this case, the parking brake is on. Releasing the parking brake, or fixing the fault, will turn off the condition icon notice. Touching the return arrow will display the main screen. To access the brush pressure and solution flow rate controls, touch either of the control icons. Touching the brush pressure plus icon will increase the brush pressure. Touching the brush pressure minus icon will reduce the brush pressure. When the solution flow is set to the lowest setting, 
Touching the Solution Flow Minus icon will turn off the Solution Flow. Touching the Solution Flow Plus icon will turn the Solution Flow back on. Touching the Solution Flow Plus icon again will increase the Solution Flow. Touching the Solution Flow Minus icon will reduce the Solution Flow. Touching either the Brush Pressure or Solution Control icons will hide the Adjustment Controls. Below the display panel are two buttons. Either of these buttons can be used to quickly turn off solution flow when approaching a tight turn and turn it back on again when exiting the turn. The engine speed can be controlled with the engine RPM icon. Touching the icon once will increase the engine RPM. Touching it again reduces the speed. The large green button in the center of the control module is the one step button. Pressing this button turns on all cleaning systems that are set to standby. Pressing the button again turns off all cleaning systems. When the one step button is pressed to stop cleaning, the machine remembers which settings were active. When the one step button is pressed to start cleaning again, the machine will return to those settings. There are three scrubbing function buttons to the right of the one step button and three sweeping function buttons to the left of the one step button. The three scrubbing function buttons control the main scrubbing brushes, squeegee and vacuum fan, and the optional scrubbing side brush. The three sweeping function buttons control the main sweeping brushes, dust control vacuum systems, and side sweeping brushes. Before the one step button is pressed, Pressing any of the scrubbing buttons or sweeping buttons will place the equipped function in standby. When the one step button is pressed, any function in standby will be activated. When the one step button is pressed again, all cleaning functions will be turned off, but stay in standby. When the one step button is pressed to start cleaning again, any function in standby will be activated again. If the sweeping systems have been used, when they are deactivated, the filter shaker system will automatically run. Anytime the machine is traveling in reverse, the rearview camera will turn on to display people and equipment behind and near the machine. The operator must always be aware of machine surroundings. While cleaning, the operator can touch the performance view icon to inspect the performance of the machine. The screen display will return to normal operation after a short period of time. If a supervisor has set up preset cleaning zones on your machine, you simply need to touch the appropriate zone for the area you are cleaning. The brush pressure, solution flow rate, and other cleaning settings will be activated for that zone. By touching the film strip icon, you can watch helpful videos. The headlights, tail lights, and safety lights are controlled with a switch to the left of the steering wheel. By pressing the bottom of the switch, you can turn on all of the lights. By pressing the top of the switch, you can turn on only the headlights and tail lights. By placing the switch in the middle position, you can turn off all lights. If your machine is equipped with a pressure washer, the pressure washer hose is stored behind the operator's seat. The switch above the light switch controls the pressure washer pump. Pressing the top of the switch turns on the pressure washer pump. You can use the pressure washer to clean the machine or other items. Press the bottom of the switch to turn the pump off when finished. There are two rocker switches located to the left of the operator. The rocker switch on the left is the hopper raise and lower control switch. Note, before raising the hopper, be aware that the ceiling height needed is 96 inches or approximately 2.5 meters. To raise the hopper, press and hold the top of the hopper up-down rocker switch. Warning. When working around or under a raised hopper, engage the hopper safety pin. To lower the hopper, remove the hopper support pin, then press and hold the bottom of the hopper up-down rocker switch. 
You can press the lower half of the hopper door open close switch to open the hopper door. Press the upper half of the hopper door open close switch to close the hopper door. However, the hopper door will close automatically as the hopper is lowered. Note, when you turn on the cleaning systems, the hopper door automatically opens. It automatically closes when you turn off the cleaning systems. The dust filter shaker automatically runs when the sweeping systems are turned off. If additional dust filter cleaning is desired, the top of the dust filter shaker switch should be pressed to start the shaker timer. The shaker will turn off when the shake time has been reached or the top of the shaker switch is pressed again. The machine direction of travel and propel speed is controlled by a foot pedal. Press on the top of the foot pedal to propel the machine forward. Press the bottom of the foot pedal to propel the machine in reverse. The further you press the pedal in either direction, the faster the machine propels. Remove your foot from the pedal and the machine will stop propelling. The pedal to the left of the propelling pedal is the brake pedal. Depress the brake pedal to stop the machine. To set the parking brake with the brake pedal depressed, press down on the toe pedal and remove your foot from the brake pedal. To release the parking brake, depress and release the brake pedal again. Your machine can dry sweep or scrub and wet sweep, so there are separate controls for each operation. So let's explore the sweeping system controls first. Your machine is designed to dry sweep and control dust when you press the one step button. When the one step button is pressed again to turn off the sweeping systems, the sweeping functions stop after a short delay. When wet sweeping and scrubbing, the sweep vacuum fan is not activated by the machine. Before we explore the scrubbing controls and instruments, we would like to explain the scrubbing capabilities of your machine. Conventional mode, the optional fast mode, optional ECH2O mode, or the optional extended scrub mode. All configurations will scrub in conventional mode. Note, in all scrubbing modes, travel speed and floor conditions will affect scrubbing performance. Conventional mode scrubbing controls and instrumentation. Pressing the one-step scrub button enables the machine to scrub in the conventional mode, which regulates the amount of solution delivered to the floor. In all scrubbing modes, the scrubbing brush pressure can be set to match conditions. Under normal scrubbing conditions, set the brush pressure to the minimum setting required. Under heavier scrubbing conditions, set the brush pressure to the middle or maximum pressure setting. The machine defaults to the most recent settings used each time it is started. In all scrubbing modes, the solution flow rate can be set to match the conditions. You can adjust the solution flow rate by pressing either the solution increase, plus button, or solution decrease, minus button. This way, you can set the solution flow level for your scrubbing conditions. Under normal scrubbing conditions, adjust the solution flow level to the lowest setting required. For heavily soiled areas, you can use a scrubbing method called double scrubbing. Press the one-step scrub button and then the vacuum fan squeegee button. The squeegee will raise and the vacuum fan will stop operating. Scrub the area requiring double scrubbing. Let the cleaning solution set on the floor for three to five minutes. Press the vacuum fan squeegee button again to lower the rear squeegee and turn on the vacuum fan. Scrub the floor a second time to pick up the cleaning solution. Optional fast mode scrubbing controls and instrumentation. Fast scrubbing technology offers the advantages of using less water and detergent than conventional scrubbing. The operator will be able to scrub more area per tank of water using less detergent. This technology also provides the advantage of leaving a drier and safer floor surface. Unlike conventional scrubbing, the optional foam scrubbing technology, or FAST mode, operates by injecting the fast pack detergent concentrate into the system with a small amount of water and air. There is no need to mix detergent with the water in the solution tank 
because the fast technology provides meter detergent and water delivery to the scrubbing systems. The fast mixture creates a large volume of expanded wet foam. The expanded foam mixture is dispersed onto the floor while the machine is scrubbing. When the squeegee picks up the mixture, the patented foaming agent has collapsed and is recovered into the recovery tank. The FAST system can be used with all double scrubbing and heavy duty scrubbing applications. Pressing the FAST button enables the FAST system to come on when the one step scrub button is turned on. If the machine is turned off with the FAST system activated, the machine defaults to this setting the next time it is started. The Extended Scrub, or ES, mode provides an economical method for scrubbing floors. The ES system recycles recovered solution from the recovery tank through a filtration system and transfers it back into the solution tank for reuse. As the solution is reused, detergent is injected into the solution to maintain a consistent concentration and improve cleaning ability. If your machine is equipped with the ES system, Pressing the ES button turns the ES system on and off. The machine will default to the ES setting the next time the machine is started if the machine is shut off while in the ES mode. If the ES system is active, the solution is recycled automatically whenever enough solution is detected in the recovery tank. When operating in ES mode and the bottom solution flow light is illuminated, the flow rate is low, without detergent. When the middle light is on, the flow rate is low, with detergent. When the top light is on, the flow rate is high, with detergent. Your new tenant scrubber sweeper can also be used to pick up water or non-flammable liquid spills. Warning! Do not pick up flammable materials or reactive metals that can cause an explosion or fire. Next, drive the machine over the non-flammable liquid spill to pick it up. Before cleaning with your machine, there are a few pre-operational checks that need to be done to confirm your machine is ready to be used. Check the hydraulic fluid level. Check the fuel level. Check the condition of the main brushes. Remove any string, banding, plastic wrap, or other debris wrapped around the brushes. Check the main brush compartment right hand skirt and squeegee for damage and wear. Check the optional side scrubbing brush or sweeping brush. Remove any string, banding, plastic wrap, or other debris wrapped around the brush. Check the condition of the side brush skirt or squeegee. Confirm the radiator and hydraulic cooler fins are clean. Check the engine coolant level. Check the engine oil level. Check the main brush compartment left hand skirt and squeegee for damage and wear. Check the left solution tank cover seal for damage and wear. Check the recovery tank cover seal for damage and wear. Confirm the vacuum fan screen is clean. Confirm the optional ES filter is clean. Confirm the recovery tank is drained and clean. Check the right solution tank cover seal for damage and wear.
Check the condition of the hopper dust filter and clean as required. Check the hopper dust filter seals for damage and wear. Check the vacuum hoses for debris or blockage. Check the squeegees for damage and wear. Check the optional fast pack detergent concentrate level and replace as needed. Ensure all conventional cleaning agents are drained and rinsed from the solution tank. Note, when fast scrubbing, ensure the solution tank is filled with clear, cool water only. Check the headlights, tail lights, and safety lights. Check the steering and brakes for proper operation. Check the service records to determine maintenance requirements. Depending on your machine configurations, before scrubbing you will need to determine which scrubbing option to use. This will help you properly prepare your machine for scrubbing. To prepare to use your machine in conventional scrubbing mode, drive the machine to the filling site, shut off the engine, and set the parking brake. Open either the left or right solution tank fill cover and partially fill the solution tank with water not to exceed 60 degrees centigrade or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Pour detergent into the solution tank or use an automatic detergent metering system. For safety, when using your machine, follow the mixing and handling instructions on chemical containers. Attention! For conventional scrubbing, only use recommended cleaning detergents. Machine damage due to improper detergent usage will void the manufacturer's warranty. Fill the solution tank with water until the level is just below the indicator tab. Warning: Flammable materials can cause an explosion or fire. Do not use flammable materials in tanks. To prepare to operate your machine in the optional fast mode, fill the solution tank with only clean, cool water at a temperature of less than 21 degrees centigrade or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Note. Do not use hot water or add any conventional floor cleaning detergents, or fast system failure may result. Next, confirm the fast pack detergent concentrate package on the machine contains sufficient cleaning agent. If the fast pack requires replacing, open the side access door and adjust the operator's seat completely forward. Squeeze the fast supply hose connector button and disconnect the fast pack hose from the fast supply hose. Remove the empty fast pack from the bracket and discard the empty fast pack. Remove the perforated knockouts from the new fast pack carton, but do not remove the bag from the carton. Pull the hose connector out from the bottom of the bag and remove the hose cap from the connector. Note: The fast pack floor cleaning concentrate is specially designed for use with the fast scrubbing system. Never use a substitute cleaning solution. Other cleaning solutions will cause unsatisfactory cleaning results. Connect the fast supply hose to the fast pack hose connector and slide the new fast pack into the fast pack bracket. After replacing an empty fast pack, scrub with the fast system for a few minutes to allow the cleaning agent to reach maximum foaming. Note: When the fast pack is not installed, plug the supply hose connector into the storage plug to prevent the hose from clogging. To prepare your machine for fast mode scrubbing after it has been used in conventional scrubbing mode, Drain, rinse, and refill the solution tank with clear, cool water before scrubbing in fast mode. To prepare to use your machine in the optional Extended Scrub or ES mode, drive the machine to the filling site, shut off the engine, and set the parking brake. If you're using the optional Auto Fill system, 
Connect the hose from your water source to the auto fuel connection on the machine. Turn the ignition switch to the on position and turn on the water source. Note, the water used cannot exceed 60 degrees centigrade or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The auto fill system will fill both the solution tank and recovery tanks to the proper level and then stop the filling process. If you're not using the auto fill system, open either the left and or right solution tank fill cover and completely fill the solution tank with water. Open the recovery tank cover and fill the recovery tank with water until the tank is about half full. Note, if not using the ES system, do not add water to the recovery tank. Fill the detergent tank with the recommended detergent. Attention! For ES scrubbing, only use the recommended cleaning detergents in your machine. Machine damage due to improper detergent usage will void the manufacturer's warranty and cause unsatisfactory cleaning results. To use the ECH2O technology, fill the solution tank with clean, cool water only. The water temperature should not exceed 21 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not use hot water or add any conventional floor cleaning detergents or an ECH2O system failure may result. The amount and type of soilage play an important role in determining the type of brushes to use on your machine. For best results, use the correct brush type for your cleaning application. For maximum brush life and best performance, Rotate the brushes front to rear after every 50 hours of operation. The brushes require replacing if the remaining brush bristles measure 15 millimeters or one half inch in length. Always replace the brushes in sets to prevent one scrub brush from scrubbing more aggressively than the other. To change the main brushes, first stop the machine on a level surface and make sure the scrub head is in the raised position. Next, turn off the machine and set the parking brake. Open the driver compartment side squeegee door to access the rear brush. Next, unlock the idler door handle, twist the handle counterclockwise, and open the idler door. Firmly grasp the brush idler plate handle and pull the brush idler plate from the scrub head. Then, pull the brush down and out of the scrub head. Slide the new brush onto the drive motor hub. Reinstall the brush idler plate onto the scrub head. Close the idler door, twist the idler door handle clockwise, and push the handle down to lock the idler door shut. Close the squeegee door and confirm it is latched. To replace the front brush, repeat this procedure on the other side of the machine. The optional side brush provides a wider sweeping or scrubbing path and allows you to clean next to walls and racks. The side brush can be either a sweeping brush for dry sweeping or a scrubbing brush for wet sweeping and scrubbing. To change the side brush, first stop the machine, raise the side brush, set the parking brake, and turn off the machine. Next, manually spin the brush until the spring handles are visible through the opening on top of the side brush assembly. Reach through the access hole in the side brush guard and the hole on top of the side brush assembly Squeeze the spring handles and let the side brush drop to the floor. Remove the side brush from underneath the side brush assembly. Place the new side brush underneath the side brush assembly and lift the side brush up onto the side brush hub until the brush locks onto the hub. Rotating or changing the rear squeegees. If only the rear squeegee requires rotation or replacement, stop the machine on a level surface, set the parking brake, and raise the hopper about halfway up. Next, turn off the machine and insert the hopper safety pin into the hopper safety support tube and unlatch the rear squeegee retainer and swing the retainer band off to the side. Remove and rotate or replace the rear squeegee on the squeegee alignment tabs. Swing the squeegee retainer band onto the squeegee, secure the latch, remove the safety pin from the hopper safety support tube, start your machine, and lower the hopper.
If the front squeegee also requires rotation or replacement, you will need to remove the squeegee assembly from the machine. To remove the squeegee assembly from your machine, disconnect the vacuum hose and loosen both squeegee assembly retainer knobs. Next, lift the entire assembly off of the machine and loosen the front squeegee retaining band latch. Swing the retaining band away from the rear squeegee assembly to gain access to the front squeegee. Install the new front squeegee blade or rotate the existing blade to a new edge. Be sure the holes in the squeegee blade are aligned with the tabs on the rear squeegee assembly. Reinstall the front squeegee retaining band over the front squeegee and secure the front squeegee band latch. Place the rear squeegee assembly onto the machine and use the mounting knobs to secure the rear squeegee assembly onto your machine. Reattach the vacuum hose to the rear squeegee assembly. Changing the side squeegees. With the machine stopped on a level surface, set the parking brake and turn off the machine. Open the main brush door and unlatch the side squeegee retaining band. Remove the retaining band from the side squeegee assembly. Pull the old squeegee off of the side squeegee frame assembly and install a new squeegee onto the frame, aligning the holes on the squeegee with the pins on the frame. Reinstall the side squeegee retaining band by hooking the front of the band on the front of the side squeegee frame. Then place it on the side squeegee and secure the retaining latch. Changing the side brush squeegee. With the machine stopped on a level surface with the parking brake set, turn off the machine. Next, remove the clevis pin clip from the side brush squeegee clevis pin and remove the pin from the side brush squeegee frame. Remove the squeegee retainer from the frame and pull the squeegee forward off of the side brush squeegee frame. Clean the squeegee mount assembly and apply a light coat of water and detergent into the grooves of the new squeegee. Slide the new squeegee into the side brush assembly. Finally, reinstall the squeegee retainer, clevis pin, and clevis pin clip. Cleaning with your machine. Before scrubbing with your machine, manually pick up oversized debris, wire, string, twine, or any other debris that could become wrapped around or tangled in the brushes. Plan scrubbing and or sweeping in advance, and try to arrange long runs with minimum stopping and starting. To start scrubbing, start the machine and if necessary, set the scrub mode and settings for the area being cleaned. Press the one step scrub button to start scrubbing. The light on the button turns on and the machine defaults to previously used settings. Note, do not turn on the FAST system during conventional scrubbing. Conventional cleaning detergents could damage the FAST injector system. If FAST operation is desired, drain, rinse, and refill the solution tank with cool, clean water before operating the FAST system. Release the parking brake and press the propel pedal to begin scrubbing but for safety, drive slowly on inclines and slippery surfaces. The machine can scrub in both forward or reverse. When operating in reverse, the rear squeegee will raise to prevent damaging the squeegee. Also when traveling in reverse, the optional reverse alarm will sound and the vacuum fan will turn off after a short delay. When traveling in forward again, all scrubbing systems will turn back on. To stop the machine, release the propel pedal and press the brake pedal. As the machine stops, the scrubbing system stop and begin again when you resume propelling. To stop scrubbing, press the one step scrub button. The light next to the one step scrub button goes off and all scrubbing functions stop after a short delay. Emptying and cleaning the machine. When your hopper or recovery tank are full or when your cleaning is finished, the machine needs to be emptied and cleaned. Position the machine near the debris container and raise the hopper. Place the hopper over the container and press the hopper door open switch. Next, lower the hopper and position the machine near a drain. For safety, before leaving or servicing the machine, stop on a level surface, set the parking brake, and turn off the machine. Place the recovery tank drain hose next to a floor drain. Open the recovery tank drain control valve. Note, the drain control valve handle can be partially set open to control the flow of water from the recovery tank. Lift the recovery tank cover and secure the cover brace. 
Next, use water to clean the recovery tank. Do not use steam to clean the tanks because excessive heat can damage the tanks and other components. Warning, flammable materials can cause an explosion or fire. Do not use flammable materials in the tanks. If the recovery tank is excessively dirty and are draining slowly due to drain hose blockage, a large expansion plug can be removed from the bottom of the recovery tank, which allows you to completely clean the recovery tank and drain hose. First, place your machine over a large floor drain. Partly raise the hopper. Place the hopper safety support pin in the lower hole. Set the parking brake and turn off the machine. Reach into the recovery tank and lift the handle on the drain plug assembly to loosen it. Lift the drain plug assembly out of the drain hole and place it to the side. Now you can rinse debris off of the drain plug assembly, away from the drain hose and out of the recovery tank. While rinsing the recovery tank, also rinse off the float sensors. If your machine is equipped with the ES option, also clean the ES filter. Next, install the drain plug and fold the plug assembly handle down to secure it in place. If your machine is equipped with the ES option and it has been used, you will also need to clean the solution tank. To do so, place the solution tank drain hose next to a floor drain. Open the solution tank drain control valve. Again, the valve handle can be moved to adjust the flow of water from the solution tank. Next, you should raise the solution tank covers and rinse out the tank with water. Again, do not use steam to clean the tanks because excessive heat can damage the tanks and other components. Once both tanks are clean, you can close both drain control valves, restore the drain hoses, and close the tank covers. Performing the daily operational checks, making needed adjustments, and following the proper operating procedures for your tenant rider floor scrubber sweeper will ensure that it will perform in top condition throughout its useful lifetime. You will find it cleans better, has fewer maintenance issues, and effectively enhances the environment. Again, not only will your machine perform well with its highly efficient floor cleaning systems the day you receive it, but for a long time to come, and we're sure you'll be very satisfied with your tenant scrubber sweeper.